Uh, my name is Dave. I'm from Tampa, Florida. Uh, I'm 40 years old and uh, married, been married 18 years. Got two kids, uh, Stephen and Tyler, 17 and 14. And uh, my story kind of starts, I've, I've always believed in Jesus, uh, but I've never, never lived through Jesus. And um, up until recently, I haven't opened my heart uh, to, let, to let his light shine through me. Uh, about four years ago, I was in a, a car accident. Um, got hooked on the pain pills. Uh, lied to my doctors about back pain. Uh, and uh, went from the light, light duty narcotics to the heavy duty narcotics. Um, about 18 months into it, uh, I knew that I was, I was getting addicted and I knew there was going to be a problem. And uh, my wife kind of caught me, for lack of a better word, um, using money, taking it out of my family's um, bank account, uh, car, car funds, house funds, and our food funds. Um, I've been working at Chili's for 18 years, or 13 years, I'm sorry. Uh, made good money. Uh, this addiction caused me to be a liar, a cheater, a stealer, a thief, a backstabber, uh, you name it, that was me. Um, so back in uh, April 2010, my wife uh, confronted me about my addiction problem. And uh, just like any other person, you know, I, I, I denied it and uh, pretend like I had it under control. And um, for my wife to catch me, um, caught me red-handed actually, but I manipulated her enough to uh, trust that I, I had everything under control. And I was good for a, a couple of months. Uh, stayed in work. Um, the pain was bearable, but it hurt. Um, Satan ran into me uh, in the way of a, a, a gentleman and uh, offered me some pills. Uh, at first I was just uh, selling them with him uh, and he would give me some. Um, and that turned into uh, me using again. Um, and my wife caught me again. So back in October of 2010, or 2011, I'm sorry, uh, my wife kicked me out of the house, um, and I thought my life was over. I thought my family was leaving me. I knew or thought that my kids would not be with me any longer, and uh, kind of gave up on life and just, well, she caught me, so I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, my wife tried to file for divorce several times, and she said that God wouldn't let her do it. Um, and I never did let Jesus into my into my life at, at that point yet. Um, so one night, uh, my wife uh, brought me, or she met me at, at the restaurant I was working at, and uh, said that um, she's willing to work things out if 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 I was willing to get some help, and. Uh, we said we were going to talk about it, but it was the first sincere conversation that we had in uh, probably two years. So that night, she told me that we were going to meet with her parents uh, and talk about getting some help for me. And uh, so I drove, I drove home and coming around the corner, uh, there was about 13, 14 cars at my house. And I had seen the intervention shows before, uh, and I knew what was going to happen, and I walked into the room. And there were people there that I hadn't seen in 10 years, 5 years, uh, along with my family, people from church, my two sons, my wife, uh, a counselor. And uh, I didn't immediately start to cry. Um, I kind of thought it was just a, not a joke, but just it wasn't sincere yet. And I sat down and my, my counselor started talking to me and you know asked me, did I have a drug problem? And uh, of course I knew that I did. Um, and I was... Uh, Again, embarrassed, uh, caught in the act, um, but I knew that this was the last hope that I had to be uh, to save my family. Um, so everybody went around the room. They read their their letters, and then uh, my 14-year-old son uh, had the courage enough to to write his dad a letter, um, and he was stronger than I was at that time. And I have the letter here, so I'm going to read it. says, to my padre. My youngest son calls me padre. My oldest son calls me dada. So when they're on the phone, I know which, which one it is. It says, first of all, I want to say that I love you very much. But since you have become an addict, I do not know who this person is. Before the drugs, you spent time with me. 
You took me to games. You helped me get better. You helped me with my homework. You've always been a good dad, but you were a great dad. After the drugs, you were always tired. You didn't want to do anything with us anymore. Your job suffered. We couldn't even stand being around you. One time, or many times, you fell asleep at the wheel of the car and we had to wake you up. You could have killed us, Dad. Dad, I do love you, but if you do not get help, it is like saying you are dead to me. My father, David McGibbon, is dead. And I do not want anything to do with you if you continue using drugs. If that doesn't make a father understand what courage is, then nothing will. I keep a picture of my, in my Bible of three of the most important people in my life. Other than Jesus now. So that night, my wife uh, gave me the option. She says, either you come get help or you no longer have a family. <clears throat> At that point, it wasn't a real hard choice, though I tried to convince her that I needed to make one more good deal. And thank goodness I didn't, because I don't know that I would have lived through it. So that night, we packed up. My wife said I had five minutes to pack. And uh, I had no idea exactly where we were going at first. And I just knew that it was going to be better than, than what I was doing to myself. So that night, we, uh, we packed up. She gave me five minutes, like I said. Um, said we were going to South Carolina to a treatment center. And I didn't know what to expect. And on the drive up here, we didn't get much sleep that night. We, uh, we, we didn't reconcile, but we talked for the first time in, in, in a couple of years. You know, my wife always told me that she thought something was wrong, but she didn't want to believe it. Eighteen years ago, my wife said I was like Superman to her. You know, I rescued her from, from things that she was fighting. And for her Superman to get hit with the kryptonite of a little pill, she just didn't believe it. And to be honest with you, I guess I didn't really believe it either. I always thought I had it under control. But I hurt her. I did many bad things to her. I didn't deserve her forgiveness, but she showed me mercy. So anyway, to get to we, we get back up uh, to drive, and we pull up around the corner in the back, and uh, I said, man, what kind of place is this? I thought we were going to a recovery center. And uh, my wife told me that she didn't think that it was a hospital treatment that I needed, but it was a Christian treatment. Now keep in mind that I, again, I knew, I knew about Jesus, but I was never in the Bible. That was... Uh, March 16th of 2012. <clears throat> First pre people I met was Zeppi and Richard. I didn't know if they were clients. I didn't know what they were. Um, I had imagined getting strip searched. Uh, they didn't do that, luckily. Uh, but they'd go through all my clothes, went through all my personal belongings, took all of my money out of my wallet, and gave it to my wife. I got a little bit of money, but... Uh, so I walk into the room, say goodbye. I did say goodbye to my wife. First kiss we had in about 18 months. That really meant anything. Uh, I walk into the room, and the first thing I said was, where's the TV? And Randy goes, you left it at home. I guess that was a good start. Um, There's 16 beds in there. I went to find my clothes, and they put me above this guy named Jimmy. <clears throat> first thing they said is, you don't want to sleep there. I didn't know any better, so I slept there. Didn't sleep much that first night. I'll never forget waking up. Jimmy looks up at me and says, Hey, buddy, did I wake you up all night? <laughs> yeah, he did, but I didn't tell him that. And that's okay. He's a good man. He's here for a good reason as well. So uh, I fought the recovery, this recovery program for a little while. <clears throat> you know, I was in fear that uh, my wife was going to leave me here, file for divorce. And just tell me that I need to get help and then go on with her life. <clears throat> I'll never forget my first letter from my wife. It said how much she loved me. And that this 90 day sacrifice was going to make the rest of our life much better. As a father, as a husband, and someday as a Christian. 
today I can tell you I'm a Christian. So I fought the recovery program, like, like I said, for a couple of weeks. Met up with a couple of guys that uh, were probably here for the wrong reason. Uh, they said that I didn't want to stay here and, uh, you know, get out as quick as I could. Um, you know, this was a work camp. It's not a work camp. This is a God camp. We went from hiding from place to place, and all we thought about was what kind of drugs we did and how much we did. And uh, Needless to say, I knew that I, I couldn't hang around those people and get healthy. So I started to let the program work in me, and I submitted myself. A month later, I was baptized by Brandon over at the baptistry. The tapestry, baptistry. And uh, that was April, April 23rd, changed my life. I was baptized when I was younger, uh, but that wasn't a full commitment to God. That was some of the choice that somebody else made for me. <clears throat> Today I can tell you that I want to live my life for God first, through God, and hopefully lead other people to God. When I get to go home, the first thing I need to do is stay and get, get to a church and stay committed to a church. Everything else will work out. I got a lot of making up to do with my wife, a lot of making up to do with my kids. But as long as I stay in the Word of God, He'll bring all that to me. I get to leave this week, and it's going to be a joyous time, and it's going to be a scary time. You know, for the longest time, I, I blamed God for my addiction. I said, why, could you, why did you make me an addict? He didn't make me an addict. I made myself an addict. The good news is, he turned my addiction into a success story. And today, you look at a miracle. If you don't believe in miracles, I'm one. I lost everything I had except for God. I lost my family, almost lost my kids, tons of money, a great job, but I still wasn't happy. And now I have God in my life, and I don't have money. don't even know if I have a house to go back to. But as long as I keep God in my life, and my wife with me, everything's going to be okay. I truly believe that God brought me to the promised land for a reason. First of all, to get right with Him. But second of all, to help mentor and be with the other, other people here and, and show them strength, hope, and encouragement. And I think I've done that. My prayer is someday to come back here. I don't know in what capacity. And I don't really want it to be my prayer. I want it to be God's will. And if it's meant to be, you'll see me again. It's been a great journey, but it's just starting. I get to strain now. Strain for God instead of strain for Satan. <clears throat> he tried to take my life, but God never left me. I left him. And that's a success story. You know, he took away my wife and kids to show me that he never left me. And then he brought my wife and kids back to me. And I'm going to be a stronger, better man because of it. I hope my story helps someone. I hope my strength helps someone. And if you ever need to talk, get through the promised land and I'll talk to you. Amen.